What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. So this review is a long time coming, but I didn't want to rush it and it took me a little while to complete because I wanted to take my time with this one. In reality, this review is a little bit more along the lines of a retrospective in terms of being in-depth, but I really can't categorize it that way because the game is relatively new. Nevertheless, I am going to give this title its due respect in terms of the overall examination. For one, it's kind of like the end of an era, especially for us gamers who have loved the Uncharted franchise for so many years, and to see it come to an end is kind of a passing of the torch so to speak. Naughty Dog is really a game publisher that's on the cutting edge of interactive media. It's won several awards for many titles that it's produced, one in particular which is my personal favorite, The Last of Us. And rest assured, I will be doing a retrospective on that game. So the big question is, did Naughty Dog pull it off? Did they give us one last great adventure worthy of the Uncharted franchise? Well of course they did silly! This review, retrospective, whatever I'm calling it, is just for the archives. Guys, trust me when I tell you, it has been my most sincere pleasure to be able to play and review Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. Let's take a closer look. Alright guys, so the first thing I gotta say about this game is that right. it is freaking beautiful. I mean, like, really beautiful. I can't believe how amazing this game looks. Now a couple of months ago I did my official review on Metal Gear Solid 5 and I remember how impressed and blown away I was by their lighting engine. Well this game blows that away, completely. Now that's not a knock against Metal Gear Solid 5, it had its own problems, but man does this game look exquisite. This title also raises the bar of certain aspects of video games that have not always been easy to capture and that's voice acting and the countenance in the face with the motion captures and this game takes it to another level. Man, I, I gotta tell you, some of the CGI in this game is on par with some of the best movies and that's saying a lot. Another wonderful component is that you don't have a real disposition between the CGI and the gameplay. It's completely seamless and it makes it that much more immersive. Overall, it just makes the experience much more organic and because of it you really start to care about the characters and what happens to them. Now, I do have to talk about the story but I'm going to try not to put any spoilers in it. But if you know anything about Naughty Dog and the Uncharted franchise, you are already kind of get the gist of what's going on here. Now, I really love how we're introduced into this world and into the game in general. It turns out that Nathan Drake has a brother and the fact that you go back to their origin when they were kids and you see the interaction between the two makes it much more compelling later on in the game. Also, what they do with this origin story is actually quite brilliant. Now, most stories will go into a flashback and then never review it or never visit it again, but not here. It's actually a recurring theme throughout the entire game and because of it, it makes it much more impactful emotionally and you really get a sense that these two brothers really love each other. In a game of this quality, we do have to talk shop just a little bit and from a technical aspect, this game is a marvel. Now, just check out this interaction here. This is fully rendered and in real time. And if you'll notice, all the characters have their own individual movements. It's pretty incredible. That is a lot of characters to be having on screen. And there's no dips in frame rate and the resolution stays great. That's actually pretty impressive. Now, what would an Uncharted title be without the death defying jumping, running, wall crawling, scaling, and now they've actually added a new feature which is grappling. Guys, you know that feeling when you're on a roller coaster and you suddenly take a nosedive down and your stomach goes rushing up to you? Yeah, that's the feeling that I had throughout this whole game and my palms were constantly sweating because I was trying to climb those impossible cliffs. This especially happened whenever I would reach for something and the damn thing would fall apart like particle board. This game is intense and the tension level is through the roof. You know, it's really true what they say, whenever you're on something high, you shouldn't look around or look down because it gives you vertigo. And that happened to me constantly, which is kind of silly because it's in a video game. But nevertheless, whenever I was up somewhere high, I made the stupid mistake of looking around and it completely messed with my mind. As I mentioned before, you also have this really cool new mechanic, which is the grapple feature. Especially in sequences like this when you're sliding down a mountain and the only way to save your life is to grapple on something at the last minute. Man, let me tell you, it was freaking intense and I loved every minute of it. I'm glad that they include this feature. 
Now, hand-to-hand -hand combat makes a return also. You're not just running and gunning the whole time. Sometimes you're gonna get into a badass brawl, and it's so satisfying. The hits are so hard, and it's really something special. The cool thing I like about it is that when you have AI partners and you're getting messed up or getting put into a headlock, they actually help you out. The AI here is very intuitive. I'm really impressed. You know, other games try to do it and then your AI is a complete freaking moron. Not here. Man, they really watch your back. Another really cool aspect about this type of combat is that you can use your environment to your advantage. For example, if they have your head pinned against the wall or if they got you against the corner, you can either headbutt them or push them forward and slam their head against the wall. It's a really cool dynamic and mechanic and man, it's just so satisfying. I loved it. Now, what I also really love about this game is that it gives you enough time to kind of slow down and reflect on everything that's happened in terms of the action. And I think it makes it more compelling in terms of a video game. There's also a really cool mechanic where you actually get to play the PS1 version of Crash Bandicoot. And I thought it was really cool. It was nice to be able to go back and kind of be a little nostalgic and play those earlier games. It certainly took me back to my teens and, you know, I was digging it. But in actuality, this is not just another game mechanic. It's very self-aware of the fact that you're playing a video game. And, you know, it also brings up a very interesting theme about what happens to adventurers when they kind of retire, when they no longer have that life. What do they become? And this is a really poignant moment in the game. Scenes such as this ask some very existential questions about your role in life and about the choices that you've made and whether or not you're satisfied with them. Because of these moments, these characters are a lot more real and you're a lot more invested in what's going on with them in terms of the story, much more compelling as an overall medium. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm warning you. What are you going to do? I'm warning In real life, what can you do? I'm Show me, what can you I'm do in real life? What do you think about that? Huh? <laughs> hey, are you happy? Yeah, of course. You? Um... Um? <laughs> really? Come here. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? True to form and true to life, things have a way of changing and derailing your comfortable life. And after a while, we soon find out that Nathan has to go back out and adventure to save his brother. Now this is not really a spoiler, so don't jump down my throat, but I won't give specifics on what's exactly going on because you really need to freaking experience it because it's pretty awesome. So I've already mentioned this before, but I feel like I need to reiterate this point. This game is absolutely beautiful, and the varying locations only complement that fact. Now the Uncharted series has always been known for taking you to very exotic locations in search of treasure. However, this entry in the series is exceptional, and it's a lot grander in scale. Along your adventure, you're going to travel to the beautiful vistas of Italy, the snowy cliffs of Scotland, and the volcanoes and vast savannas of Madagascar. I also really like that they've made some subtle but incremental changes to the overall gameplay. In addition to the grapple feature, they've also included this really amazing stealth feature, which means that you don't always have to run and gun, and you don't always have to use brute force to take down your enemies. Now, you can take them down silently. But do not fret, my friends, because when it's time to go loud, we go loud. The gunplay in this game is absolutely amazing. Now, obviously, the Uncharted series has always been known for being a third-person shooter. And sometimes in third-person shooters, the mechanics and the controls are stiff. Not here. They've actually been very refined from previous titles, and it's so intuitive. I also noticed that they cleaned up some of the cover mechanics from previous titles. Before, you would often get stuck against a wall or get stuck behind some kind of crate when you didn't want to. But here they cleaned it up a little bit and I think it's a lot more improved. 
Another welcome sight is the fact that you have a lot more variety in terms of the weapons that you use. Even some really cool ones that you can really take out a bunch of enemies with. And that's always very satisfying. At some point in the game you're going to encounter these enemies that actually carry miniguns and the cool thing about that is that once you defeat them or take them down, you can actually take their weapon and use it against the other enemies. I also notice there's a lot more fluidity between the environment and gunning in general. For example, you can gun while you're sliding and my personal favorite, you can use your environment to manipulate the situation. Like this. Now, it would be a crime if I didn't talk about the Jeep and the driving in this game because it's so much freaking fun. Now, here's the cool thing about this game. I know that it leads you in a general direction of where you need to go, but it gives you so many paths in which to do so, and it really encourages exploration so that you can find little artifacts along the way. <laughs> and man, yeah, I'm telling you, it's so much fun. Fortunately, the controls on the Jeep are very tight and they're extremely responsive. So even if you don't want to get to where you need to get, you can just drive around for a little while. Believe me, you'll enjoy it. And here's the thing too, the Jeep isn't just used to get you from point A to point B. It's actually essential to not only traverse vast expanses along your way, but also to solve a few puzzles. And believe me when I tell you, this thing is going to help you get out of some very sticky situations. Sometimes quite literally. Ah, oh, oh, oh. oh, that looked like fun. Steeper than it looks. But guys, I will say this: be very careful with that winch, and especially where you place certain things, because believe me, it leads to some crazy crap in the game that happens like this. And guys, this is just a minute taste of the crazy shit that happens throughout this game. I mean, one moment you're just resting and kind of reflecting on what just happened, and the next minute you're into some crazy sequences like this. And the great thing about it is that none of this is QTE, it's not quick time events or anything like that. It's actually in gameplay, so you're controlling your character the whole time. And man, let me tell you, it's freaking exhilarating as hell. I'm so glad that they have these sequences, it really wakes you up. Now, in addition to the gameplay, the overall mechanics, and just so many things that you can do in this game, it also gives you a choice of what you can do and how to tackle certain situations. And that's really a strength to the game, and in my opinion, a plus to the game design in general. Now here, for example, you can decide whether or not you want to keep taking out these jeeps, or if you want to commandeer one of them to get to the next level. It's completely up to you. The fluidity is great, and I just like the fact that they give you options on how to take on these missions. It's really freaking cool. And again, I have to reiterate this point, this is all happening in real time. It's all happening in-game, and that's pretty remarkable. Thankfully, later on in the game, you do meet up with Elena again, and I'm so glad to have her on the adventures once more. One of the reasons that I liked her from the initial titles, in fact all of them, was that she was not cliched, she was not one-dimensional. She actually brings a lot of heart to the story, and really is Nathan Drake's emotional center. All of the dialogue between the characters is very organic and it seems like it's very unscripted. The banter between them is fantastic. This is particularly true between Elena and Nathan. Their dialogue is fantastic and you really understand and get a sense that they are a couple and they're battling through a few issues. Moments like this makes it much more realistic. Yeah. For better or worse.
Now, this truly wouldn't be a treasure hunting game without talking about one of my favorite mechanics, and that's puzzle solving. Now guys, be prepared, because these aren't just simple little puzzles that you have to solve. You really have to use your noodle noggin to figure them out. And man, when you do figure them out, they're so satisfying. And the great thing about these puzzles also is that they're so varied in terms of how to figure them out and how elaborate they are. Thankfully though, Nathan is very astute and he actually scribbles a lot of notes down in his notebook so that he can go and open it up in case you get lost or stuck. There are subtle clues there, but even those you still have to think about. However guys, I do have to forewarn you, not all of these puzzles are benign in nature. Some of them are actually deadly traps, and if you're not paying attention and if you're not careful, it could lead to some deadly consequences, sometimes frustrating ones. Says the guy who set off every mummy bomb in this place. Well, you know, not a lot of experience with the mummy bombs. Thank you. Now, what I love about these characters is that they're very human. They're not like these super soldiers who never get in trouble or who never screw up. And that's actually one of the more interesting things about them. As you can see here, Nate, in typical fashion, set off something that he wasn't supposed to, and he really wasn't paying attention, and it led them into this very hilarious scene. And I like that Elena was there because, I don't know, those two are just great together. I loved every minute of it. Guys, I can go on and on about the Uncharted series and how wonderful it is, but you know, this would turn into like a movie event and I know that you guys don't have that kind of time to watch these videos. I will say this, this is one of the most extraordinary, one of the most thrilling, one of the best titles I've ever played. It's truly a masterpiece, easily a 10 out of 10, and anybody who tries to argue it against it is not playing the game that I played. Overall, this is just a very refined title, full of unscripted events, excellent gunplay, beautiful sceneries, exotic locations, and at the heart of it, just very good storytelling and excellent characters. I loved every minute of it, and you know, I'm actually getting a little sentimental that this is over. It's pretty clear that Naughty Dog is really at the forefront of where I want to see, personally, this medium go. You know, people give a lot of shit to video games and they say that they're just for children, but in my opinion, it's not only that they're not for children anymore, it's that they're exclusively for adults and because of the storytelling and the mature themes that they explore, I think it's really where certain things need to go at this point in the industry. And I'm calling out Hollywood. You guys really need to be paying attention to what these studios are producing because they're on a whole nother level now. Now, obviously I'm not gonna give any spoilers about the ending of this game, but I will say this. They were so respectful and it was so poignant to every single one of the characters, whether it's Elena, Jake, Nathan's brother, Sully, just everybody had such a satisfying ending that we don't always get in video games. You can tell that Naughty Dog really respected the fans and if they got any feedback from how they wanted to end this game, they certainly implemented it in the finale. It was fantastic, it was poignant, and you know what? One of the best endings to a video game that I've ever seen. I gotta give kudos to Naughty Dog. This was an excellent, excellent way to end a wonderful franchise. Now, this may be the end of the adventures for Nathan Drake, but I'm sure that Naughty Dog will come up with something to continue this series later on, and I'm really excited to see what that's gonna be. Alright guys, we made it through. So that's it. That's my official review of Naughty Dog's masterpiece, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. Now guys, just like this review, retrospective, whatever, this game is going to throw a lot of stuff at you. But what I do encourage you to do is every now and then, stop the gameplay, take a look around, take in the beauty of this game. Because if you don't, you're going to really miss out on a very critical point in the experience. Because man, these things are just incredible to look at. 
Okay guys, I must have said this a hundred times, but as always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGRs, Pop Culture Reviews, and until then, adventure on.